Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is a dense movie with new characters from the comics, old friends from other universes, internet-breaking cameos, and most importantly, Bruce Campbell. These are all the little things you may have missed. Warnings, spoilers ahead. When America Chavez arrives on Earth-616 in the Multiverse of Madness, she's followed by a monstrous creature under Scarlet Witch's control. The one-eyed, many-tentacled beast makes a mess of downtown New York City, but it's ultimately dispatched by the combined efforts of Doctor Strange and Sorcerer Supreme Wong. Merchandising for the movie calls this creature by the name Gargantos, which in the comics is the name of a sea monster that serves the subaquatic conqueror Naga. In truth, the design of the MCU's Gargantos is much more similar to Shuma Goroth, an eldritch being of immense power who's a major player in the comics. Shuma Goroth is of particular significance to Doctor Strange, being a consistent foe for the sorcerer and even causing the death of the Ancient One in Marvel premiere back in 1973. Unfortunately, Marvel Studios was unable to use the Shuma Goroth name in Multiverse of Madness due to a rights issue, according to online reports. Still, the fusion of the Old One's visual design and Gargantus' name is a fun combo, and it makes for an exciting battle. America Chavez is something of a queer icon in the comics, where she's openly gay. That aspect of her identity isn't really addressed in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, where America spends most of her time running from monsters and trying to evade capture. However, she does sport a bit of visible queer pride in the form of a pride flag pin, specifically the more modern version designed by Daniel Quasar, which includes additional colors representing the transgender community and queer people of color. Marvel Studios boss Kevin Feige has confirmed that she's still canonically queer in the MCU. After escaping from Scarlet Witch at Kamartage, Doctor Strange and America Chavez fall through a portal that hits a number of different alternate universes on the way down. It's a visually stunning montage that demands to be rewatched if only because of the many little Easter eggs sprinkled throughout it. Some of the worlds glimpsed in the portal scene are pretty explicit in their weirdness. People are paint, people are made of blocks, people are cartoons, but others may be winks and nods to some different places in the Marvel comic multiverse. Among the many dimensions that Strange and America plummet through are a black and white world reminiscent of Marvel's noir comics, a sci fi cityscape reminiscent of the 2099 timeline, and a prehistoric looking universe that could be a reference to the Savage Land, which, to be fair, is a part of Earth 616 in the comics. There's also a very brief shot of what appears to be a looming cosmic figure, none other than the fearsome Living Tribunal. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness takes viewers to a lot of different dimensions, but most of the movie's runtime is spent in two primary realities, the main MCU timeline and the one where the Illuminati rule. A variant of Dr. Christine Palmer designates the first of these worlds as Earth-616, and the second one, the one she lives in, is Earth-838. She also mentions that she works for the Baxter Foundation, a foreshadowing of the Fantastic Four reveal that follows soon thereafter, since the Super Team's classic headquarters in the comics is the Baxter Building. If you're a fan of the Marvel comics to any extent, 616 barely counts as an Easter egg. It's the primary universe of the comics canon where most of the main action takes place. With that in mind, it makes total sense that the MCU would give its own primary universe the same numerical designation, but it's still fun to hear the number actually spoken out loud. Though to be fair, this isn't the first time we've actually seen this mentioned. Back in Thor The Dark World, Dr. Eric Selvig has 616 Universe written on a chalkboard in the background, and in Spider-Man Far From Home, Mysterio mentions it too. There are multiple realities, Peter. This is Earth, Dimension 616. I'm from Earth 833. Though how the con artist Mysterio managed to get that number right is something of a mystery. Hmm. Lucky guess. If you're a fan of director Sam Raimi, chances are good that you're a fan of Bruce Campbell, too. Ever since playing Ash in the Evil Dead films, Campbell has been a favorite actor among horror movie fans in particular, as well as a prolific actor all around. Those who haven't seen Evil Dead may know Campbell from his co-starring role as Sam Axe on Burn Notice or as Atalicus in Xena Warrior Princess. Or maybe you know him from one of his multiple guest roles in the Tobey Maguire starring Spider-Man movies, which also happen to be directed by Sam Raimi. Ah. Uh, uh. Hello. Campbell and Raimi first met as kids, and they've remained close friends and collaborators ever since. The two rose to fame together with the original Evil Dead trilogy, and Campbell has continued to appear in small roles throughout the director's filmography. 
In Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, Campbell plays a sidewalk restaurateur by the name of Pizza Papa on Earth-838. He only appears in two scenes, an early moment after Doctor Strange and America arrive in his universe where he yells at them for stealing one of his pizza balls, and the second and last post credit scene in the film, where he's shown being tormented by Strange's self-slapping spell, a callback to a similar Bruce vs. Hand scene in Evil Dead 2. <laughs> Even in that brief time, though, Campbell quickly reminds audiences why he's such a beloved talent. While wandering through Earth-838 with Doctor Strange, America Chavez happens upon a device that turns your most important memories into projected video clips. When she uses the machine, it shows a tragic moment from her childhood, when she accidentally opened a portal for the first time and her mothers were sucked into it, never to be seen again. The scene isn't elaborated on much in the film, but many of the details are strikingly similar to America's comic book origin story. In the comics, America is born in a dimension outside of the normal multiverse called the Utopian Parallel. She does tragically lose her parents in that story as well, who are both women, but it's due to an external crisis instead of her own powers. The more interesting part of the Utopian Parallel in the context of Multiverse of Madness, however, is that it's directly connected to the godlike being called the Demiurge, also known as Wanda Maximoff's son, Billy. Under the superhero name Wiccan, Billy gradually becomes one of the most powerful characters in the entire Marvel Comics universe, even matching his esteemed mother's magical abilities. His final form is that of the nigh-omnipotent Demiurge, whose power sustains the Utopian Parallel. Doctor Strange 2 doesn't make any direct connection between America Chavez and Wiccan, but the MCU could possibly recreate that storyline somewhere down the road. A big part of the story in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness revolves around the Illuminati, a secretive group of superpeople who guide Earth-838. Different versions of the group are a major staple of the comics, including in famous storylines like Planet Hulk and Secret Invasion. Each member of the Council in Multiverse of Madness has some unique connection to the rest of the Marvel Universe, which is what makes their role in the film so intriguing. You brought this on yourself. The first Illuminati member met in Multiverse of Madness is a variant of Carl Mordo, who, while less evil than the one from Earth-616, still seems to be a bit conniving and prone to anger. Captain Carter will be familiar to those who watched Marvel's What If, which shows a universe in which Peggy Carter, not Steve Rogers, took the Super Soldier Serum. The Captain Marvel of Earth-838 is Maria Rambo, a close friend of 616 Captain Marvel Carol Danvers. Anson Mount's Black Bolt may seem like a newcomer to many viewers, but he first debuted in the short-lived TV series Marvel's Inhumans. And of course, Multiverse of Madness finally brings the Fantastic Four to the MCU by introducing John Krasinski's Reed Richards. Last but certainly not least is Earth-838's variant of Charles Xavier, played as he is in the Fox X-Men movies by Patrick Stewart. Of all the Illuminati members in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, Patrick Stewart's Professor X is arguably the most surprising addition. That's partly because the film franchise that made Stewart's version of the character famous was produced entirely by a separate studio. Since Disney's purchase of Fox, the introduction of mutants and the X-Men to the MCU has seemed inevitable, and now Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness has officially canonized them. However, the film's Professor X isn't surprising simply because of the actor or because of what his debut means for the future of the MCU. It's particularly interesting because everything about him mirrors his incarnation in the 1990s cartoon X-Men the Animated Series, right down to the massive golden chair and the pose he strikes when using his psychic powers. The film even uses a bit of the animated series theme music to herald Xavier's arrival. When his sorcerer's meddling ends in the destruction of Earth-616's Darkhold, Wanda demands that Wong tell her everything he knows about the book and its magic. He refuses at first, but he becomes more agreeable when she starts torturing some surviving sorcerers, one of whom, the Green Minotaur, Rintra, is a major player in the comics and an eventual apprentice of Doctor Strange himself. Wong reveals that the Darkhold was transcribed from ancient runes and magical knowledge carved into the mythical Mount Wundagore. When he and Wanda journey there together, they find what seems to be a temple erected in honor of the Scarlet Witch. Wanda's chaos magic in the comics is directly tied to Mount Wundagore, which was the final home of the ancient elder god-turned-demon, Cthon, before he left the human realm for a parallel dimension. 
Wong mentions Kathan by name in Multiverse of Madness, albeit only briefly. In the comics, Wanda is brought to Mount Wondegore as a young child and subjected to relentless experiments with chaos magic, a process that binds her forever to Kathan and his dark powers. The eldritch monsters Wanda finds at the mountain in Multiverse of Madness bow to her because they recognize the chaos magic within her, which essentially makes her both their ruler and their kin. Sam Raimi is one of the masters of the modern horror movie genre, so it only makes sense that Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness pays tribute to some of the greats of the past. In particular, Scarlet Witch's bloody crusade parallels her with a number of prominent horror movie characters, each of whom relates to Wanda's arc in some way. During her brutal assault on Kamar Taj, Wanda adopts some truly freaky mannerisms. In one shot, she crawls out of a mirror at America Chavez, but her body is all contorted and twisted up in impossible ways. For many, this moment will bring back memories of demonic possession films like The Exorcist, which is appropriate given that Wanda's soul has been corrupted and overtaken by the dangerous magic of the Darkhold. Other moments in the Kamar Taj sequence and some later scenes also style Wanda similarly to the infamous character Kayako Saigi from The Grudge, the 2004 American remake of which was produced by Sam Raimi. In that film, there's a deadly curse that's triggered by powerful negative emotions and death, two things Wanda Maximoff is all too familiar with. Later on, after Wanda successfully dreamwalks into Universe 838, her blood-covered face and clothes and violent behavior harken back to Stephen King's Carrie. Just like Carrie, Wanda has fully realized her powers as the Scarlet Witch, and the results are quite grotesque. Once in the body of her 838 counterpart, Scarlet Witch infiltrates the Illuminati headquarters and makes short work of their Ultron robots, which seem much more mild-mannered and less dangerous than the Ultron of Earth-616. The group of heroes confronts her, and Reed Richards tries to talk her down from her assault. She asks him if he has any children and if their mother is still alive. Mr. Fantastic answers yes to both questions, and moments later Wanda literally rips him to shreds. Fans of the Fantastic Four comics will know that the mother in question is almost certainly Sue Storm, aka the Invisible Woman. The children themselves could be Franklin and Valeria, the couple's son and daughter in the comics lore. Now that John Krasinski has officially been cast as Mr. Fantastic in the MCU, the rumors of his real-world wife Emily Blunt playing Sue Storm in the future may have some newfound credence. Only time will tell. When their plan to defeat Wanda with the Book of Ashanti goes awry, Doctor Strange and Earth 838's Christine Palmer wind up in a post-apocalyptic netherworld. The realm is the result of an incursion, a cataclysmic event that occurs when multiple realities of the multiverse come crashing together. Most of the landscape is composed of ghostly haze, crumbling buildings, and physical phenomena that would be impossible in our world. One of these supernatural details is a floating car, and not just any floating car. Specifically, it's the 1973 Oldsmobile Delta 88 that Sam Raimi includes in practically all of his movies. The vehicle first appeared on screen as Ash's car in the first Evil Dead, and it's also been driven by Spider-Man's Uncle Ben, among others. Like Bruce Campbell's oddball cameo, the Delta 88 is a touch that Raimi diehards will quickly recognize and should be excited to see. My mother gave it to my brother Sam, and uh, he wound up putting it in every single movie he ever made. While trying to get back to Earth-616 and save America Chavez from the Scarlet Witch, Doctor Strange encounters a strange foe, a variant of himself who's become intensely corrupted by the Darkhold. When the two first meet, Strange-616 doesn't realize the extent of his variant's villainy. Instead, it's the sinister Doctor Strange who demands proof of the other's identity, which is provided in the form of a tragic tale. Doctor Strange reveals that he had a sister named Donna who died as a child. She fell through the ice while they were playing on a frozen lake and he was unable to save her. Donna Strange is also present in the comics, though her fate is a little bit different. She does experience a medical emergency at the age of nine, but her brother is able to help her through it. Later, as a teenager, Donna suffers a fierce cramp while swimming and ends up drowning. The original Doctor Strange movie was meant to have a scene showing this tragic element of Steven's past but it was ultimately cut from the final version, according to Digital Spy. In two different scenes, Multiverse of Madness shows the idyllic home life of Wanda, Tommy, and Billy on Earth-838. Both times, the kids are watching some kind of Disney classic on TV. The first time, in the scene where Scarlet Witch first dreamwalks into her 838 counterpart, the boys are watching an old black-and-white Disney animated film. 
Viewers can make out Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, a character that Walt Disney created and lost the rights to in the late 1920s. Oswald was effectively replaced by Mickey Mouse, who went on to become a symbol for the entire Disney company. Disney reacquired the rights to Oswald in 2005, and the character has since appeared in several Disney projects, including Multiverse of Madness. The second time, when Wanda is thrown back into Universe 838 by America during the film's climax, Tommy and Billy are watching Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. That could be seen as a thematically relevant choice, as it's the scene where Wanda wakes up from her enchantment, just as Snow White eventually wakes up from her own. At the end of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, Stephen returns home, fixes the watch Christine gave him, and seems to be getting his life back on track. It isn't long before the bazaar strikes once again, however. While out for a walk, Doctor Strange is overcome with pain and begins convulsing on the ground. The camera then zooms in to show a third eye pop open on his forehead. Because the evil Doctor Strange encountered earlier in the film also had a third eye, and because he used the Darkhold constantly, it's possible that Strange 616's third eye is tied to his own use of the book. Things just got out of hand. However, a more likely possibility is that his ocular addition has to do with the Eye of Agamotto. In the comics, the Eye of Agamotto has a wide range of powers that have yet to be seen in the MCU. They mostly involve foresight, truth-seeing, and other abilities connected to knowledge and vision. These powers often manifest in the form of a third eye, which Doctor Strange can be seen sporting in a number of Marvel comics. Historically, Agamotto has been one of the Vashanti, three deities who aid the Sorcerer Supreme and the authors of the Book of Vashanti. It's possible that Strange's exposure to the book unlocked the eye's true powers. If you're not a comic book reader, the first post credit scene of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness might not make a ton of sense. The scene shows a purple-clad woman, played by Charlize Theron, approaching Doctor Strange on the street and recruiting him to help fix an incursion that she claims he caused. When he agrees, she slashes open a ragged dimensional portal, theoretically beginning the Doctor's next adventure. The credits reveal that Theron's character is Clea, an incredibly important figure in Doctor Strange's comic book history. Clea is a powerful sorcerer who lives most of her life in the Dark Dimension, where she frequently crosses paths with Dormammu, her uncle. She and Doctor Strange eventually strike up a romantic relationship and even get married. Her purple look, immense power, and no-nonsense attitude in Theron's iteration are all faithful to the comics. That bodes well for the next Doctor Strange movie, which will likely feature Clea working alongside Doctor Strange. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about the Marvel Cinematic Universe are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.